Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Bennett. Come on into my New York City apartment. I want to show you around. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Bennett Leifer. I'm an interior designer, and we're in my apartment on Gramercy Park. Gramercy Park is this great little area in Manhattan. It's the East 20s. It's the only private park in the city. It's quiet. It's classic. Uh, it's pretty elegant. It's cute. Uh, I've heard people try to come up with comparisons to different cities that Gramercy Park feels like. Funny enough, I was walking around the park with a friend last night who had never been there, and he kept saying it felt like London. I agreed with him. If you live on the park, you get a key to it, you get to enjoy it, uh, and you maintain it beautifully. My apartment is a well laid out, uh, one bedroom, one and a half bath, uh, with flexible use in each room. So the living room sort of functions as a sitting room slash dining room slash painting studio. Uh, the foyer has a hidden powder room off of it. So for a pretty tight space, uh, you know, I think it's 1,000, 1,100 square feet, uh, there's a lot of use in this apartment. Welcome to my foyer. Uh, when I moved in, it was a different shape. Part of the renovation was pulling the kitchen wall forward and pulling that wall over a bit to create a powder room that wasn't there. Uh, what I love most about this space is it's a very tight, cozy entry with a bit of formality, which I added through the paneling, and it shows off some of my favorite stuff. So some of my favorite things in this space are this beautiful pendant, uh, which my mother bought me as a housewarming present for my last apartment. I brought it with me. Actually, I have a very generous mom because she bought me this piece of art as well for the last apartment, um, but it's one of my favorites by one of my favorite artists. Uh, I really love this bench, which is actually by Mark Mankowski, the same guy who um, designed and made this beautiful pendant covered in an incredible Dadar fabric, which I was super excited to see pop up in Bridgerton. It made me feel like I made a really elegant choice. Uh, here we have some things from my travels. You know, I love to buy great little antiques, uh, sculptural things while I'm away. This was a cute little marble piece I bought in India. Two of my favorite pieces of art are these portraits of my great grandparents. What's kind of funny about those being my favorites uh, is that I don't like to keep a lot of things. My family is always trying to give me stuff and I say no. Um, but these were uh, portraits that my mother had restored. I don't know a lot more about them than that. Of course, I know who the people are and a bit about their story, but I just think the frames are so beautiful. I think their expressions are so beautiful. And it's one of those uh, sort of objects that just makes you proud to come from where you come from. I like seeing them. I think everything should have a purpose. I'm not a believer in um, arbitrary design. So even my little umbrella stand, I mean, there's one umbrella I got at an event that I think is really beautiful and I had a good time at, and my tennis racket, which I grab twice a week to play tennis. Oh, the umbrella is really pretty. It's a Romo and Temperley collaboration. I don't want to open it. I'm afraid that's bad luck, but you see, it's really pretty. Ooh, too much open, too much open. A foyer should be a welcome moment. It should welcome people into your home, but it should also be useful, right? I mean, if I'm going to break those two ideas down. So when someone comes into this space, they sort of know where to go. They can go forward to the kitchen. They can go left to the living room. They can hang their coat. Uh, and there's some beautiful moments that sort of tell them who I am through my art, my fabric choices, things like that. But it should also be useful. So personally, I don't usually wear shoes at home. So there's a bench where I can take them off. There's a great little storage moment where I can put things like keys, mail, um, whatnot. Uh, there's a mirror where I can check myself on the way out. So it should be both useful and beautiful and set the tone for the apartment. Like a lot of people during the pandemic, I sort of started to look inward about, you know, what hobbies did I have? What were my interests? And I started to try and cultivate ones that maybe had been dormant for a while. And I picked up oil painting uh, as a fairly regular hobby. Um, and it started uh, as an outdoor activity. 
And when I was designing this apartment, I had uh, designed a really beautiful bar for the living room. And over the course of this, I actually stopped drinking. So I needed to repurpose this beautiful bar because so much work had gone into it. I wasn't going to lose the bar. Uh, and I personally don't believe anything should be too precious. I think if you have something, you should use it and you should live with it. So that is now a gorgeous little oil painting studio within my living room. Uh, we're not going far. We're gonna see my kitchen, which I left exposed. I think things should just be what they are and a beautiful version of that. So it's a small space. I'm not in there that often. So I just left it open and made it very beautiful. So the kitchen, uh, the space was a little different when I got the apartment. I mentioned before that we had to pull the wall towards the foyer to make it a little bit longer, sort of pull this wall over to make some space for that pretty powder room. Uh, I also changed the windows, uh, added air, uh, dropped the ceilings to add speakers and lights. Uh, but what I really love about this space is the mix of materials. You know, I've heard people make jokes before about how you know, kitchens, you know, white kitchens are boring. and. I think things are what you think they are. And I think that white millwork is just beautiful and classic, but I wanted to make this a whole material story with marble, plain millwork, wood floors. And then I had a little fun with it by adding this wallpaper that looks like another material, a hand painted tile. So this is just a light space that brings me a lot of joy, uh, especially with the beautiful hardware. That's one of my favorite things. I think you're learning about me that anything I have is sort of my favorite. Um, so anything I can point to, I will literally designate it as my favorite, but uh, this is my favorite glassware. Uh, it's from Baccarat and they do a couple of lines with colored glass. And I think it's so beautiful to have, you know, these well-made, um, really classic pieces, but have a bit of levity to them in this sort of rainbow coloration. Uh, and I also use this as an opportunity to finally buy my favorite China pattern, which I'm terrible at pronouncing words that are not uh, inherently English, so I'm not gonna say it, but hopefully you agree with me. This is very beautiful. How about a charger? So this has always been one of my favorite patterns. Um, I get a little nostalgic for moments I've had in my career and one of the first big design projects I did on my own, this was the China pattern we used for this really incredible apartment in a different color. Uh, I've always sort of had it in the back of my head that it would be my formal dinnerware when I was ready for it. So I chose the color based on obviously the colors I like, uh, but that's how I got to the pattern. And I also find unique uses for things. Um, and it's just how my head works. So I never love leaving um, fruit or bread out. I don't know if it's a smell thing or what, but um, I had this idea to use cake plates as my fruit bowl and my little bread box. So I think that's a fun little moment as well. So I'm an interior designer. I've always intuitively been sort of a project manager designer. I've always loved math and numbers and science, but I've also been really artistic my whole life. So the convergence of the two things, sort of business management, project management, and creating things has always appealed to me. I want to say I had prior lives, but they all sort of led to this. So I think it's been more of a linear path. Now we're going to head to the living room, but on the way, I'll show you the powder room. Which is right here. Typically, that door would be closed and it would look like a hidden panel. So hold on, I'll show you what that looks like. So whereas I think it's nice to see the kitchen when you walk in, I don't know that you necessarily want to have the powder room exposed. So I designed this elevation to just sort of go away. Um, and then when you open it, it's definitely a jewel box. The inspiration for the powder room uh, really sort of came about just through doing research on different materials and it became a story about materiality. Um, I ended up choosing what I thought was the most beautiful stone floor. Uh, the most beautiful paint color. And then I found this really cool sink manufacturer that had these like incredibly um, pigmented cement color sinks. I don't know if that sort of flows, but you see where I'm going with that. Uh, so as you open this, it really started with the floor. And then I just pulled my favorite color from there into the wall color, uh, the sink color. 
and luckily had a beautiful piece of art that worked really well. Now let me show you my living room. Uh, I've mentioned this prior, but I think that rooms should have multiple uses uh, based on how you want to live. So when I was laying out this space, one of the first things I did architecturally was move a lot of stuff. So the door to the back part of the apartment used to be where that painting is. I sealed that up and moved it to the center of the room. I thought it really divided the room into different zones. Uh, this wall also pulled forward which not only created a nice opening from the foyer, but gave me a niche for a bar, which we've talked a little bit about before and I'll tell you more about. But as you come in the room, one of the most important things to me was to actually have a peaceful place to do some work. I don't generally work from home. I'm at the office all the time. So if I was going to sit here, I wanted it to be a perfect little moment for me. So just some fun little tricks. Uh, I put an outlet up here so that when I'm charging things, you don't see cords everywhere. Uh, I made the piece of furniture look more like a console than a desk so that it feels kind of nice and formal when I'm entertaining, uh, not necessarily like a home office in the middle of the living room. But I also hung one of my favorite pieces of art uh, right above it. So it's actually the first thing I see when I leave my bedroom. So this is a very special moment for me. One other funny thing, um, you know, I keep saying I'm not so nostalgic about things, but I keep telling these nostalgic stories. Uh, this is one of my favorite fabrics. Uh, it's from Hermes. They used to sell fabric by the yard through different, um, different showrooms, and they stopped doing that. So I can't get this fabric anymore. And it was the Roman shade in my old apartment bedroom. It was funny. I wasn't super attached to anything in that apartment, but I made sure that the Roman shade was excluded from the cell. Uh, so I could use it again. So this is now my desk chair and one of my favorite fabrics. So once you walk past my desk area, you come into the seating area. So this serves a couple of functions, right? It uh, has sort of well-rounded out space where you can pull chairs over from different areas if you want to have a more circular uh, conversation moment. Uh, but I also oriented it not just as a nice view when you walk in the space. I love TV, I'm sorry. So. I hung a TV on the wall. Uh, I did it in a way where it wasn't so obvious when you walked in, but also I can sit here, I can lay here. Um, I can also sit in that chair and enjoy the view of the park. So this sort of seemingly obvious layout for a furniture arrangement serves a lot of different purposes. Um, my favorite thing in this space ah, would be this pair of lamps I got at auction. I've always loved these Giacometti forms. Uh, I was lucky enough to find a great pair of these table lamps at auction. So those are two of my newer acquisitions. Uh, and then if you follow me over here, you'll see where I have my dining area. So, you know, I think if I'm going to have a large dinner party, I'm probably not going to do it in this apartment. So I really just wanted it to feel nice for about four people max. Um, I love the material and the forms of these chairs and this table. I think that they have a bit of formality and tradition to them without feeling too fussy. Um, and this little corner is really beautiful. I hung a hand-painted screen that I've had for a while and I wanted to treat it a bit more as artwork uh, in this apartment than I had prior where it was actually treated like a screen on the floor. Uh, and this is my painting bar, which I mentioned before. So, this was a fun little space. So this was created by pulling the wall out for the powder room. And I actually got a lot of excess hidden storage, which I encourage people to try and find when they're doing renovations. It's a great place to put things that you want to have access to, but don't necessarily want to see all the time. Uh, and I do these sort of hidden moments all the time. Like all of my little painting materials are hidden in my little tabletop easel, you know, mixed in over here with some other display pieces. But this also just becomes a good little art catch-all for me. Uh, that's a piece that I just bought that I haven't hung yet. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite moments in the apartment. So funny story about this painting. Um, when I take on a hobby, I go all in. So this was um, a Hudson River painting that I had bought. And the colors were just feeling a little sad to me one night. There were also some people in the foreground that I couldn't quite identify who they were, what they were doing. So one night I had the instinct to just sort of benefit by it. So I painted over what had been there before and just made it a little bit 
I would say happier. I think other people would call it moodier, but they're more jewel tone colors. So I did paint this, but over someone else's work. A challenge with pre-war apartments, uh, oftentimes, not always, is a lack of uh, architectural lighting. So what I did throughout the apartment in many spaces was drop the ceiling just a little bit, and I bought these really cool um, sort of two-inch deep uh, recess lights. Um, they're from a company called Element. I'm sure a lot of other places make them. But I didn't want to do anything to the ceiling in this space because original to the apartment uh, are these great beams with these sort of uh, plaster curved molding details. So here I added wall lighting. Uh, another part of the story is I have an affinity for two things. I love table lamps and I love uh, occasional chairs and I had too many of both of those. So in this apartment I made a concerted effort to not have too many lamps. I think you only see two in the whole apartment and the rest is all hardwired lighting. I love rugs, I love carpets, uh, and I'm also pretty loyal to a lot of the vendors I work with. I think that loyalty comes from just believing in them and what they do. So I do a lot of work with Edward Fields Taiping. Uh, most of the rugs in my projects come from there, but when I was sourcing for my own apartment, I had a meeting with Beth who uh, works with me still. She's not a salesperson anymore, but she still works with me, which I'm grateful for. And we were looking at unique rugs that I had never seen before. And this was an archival Edward Fields um, pattern that they were just reintroducing. I think someone else had revived it. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, that is just the most beautiful thing ever. It looks like a silk field in the wild. Um, and it's a mix of different silk tufts and wool tufts. Uh, it goes from pretty low to pretty high, and I custom colored it to match what I wanted uh, going on in the room color-wise. So talking about you know different uh, tonalities of green, my favorite color, um, for the trim, the bar, the millwork, and the doors, I chose this almost black uh, green from Pharaoh and Ball. These doors I love. Um, I mentioned earlier this passageway used to be over, the layout of this whole space was different, uh, and I wanted to have a nice double door moment into my bedroom, but let's be honest, this isn't a huge apartment, so they didn't need to be so wide and overwhelm the space. So I sized these with my architect sort of to the minimal width they could be, did a really interesting design on them, uh, and I think these become almost like a piece of art in the room. They really center the space when you're looking this way, the same way that the artwork does when you're looking in the other direction. And if you'd like to see my bedroom, I'll show you. But I can open both sides just in case you don't have to squeeze. So this room was really fun to design. This is my bedroom. And it was one of the few spaces that I got to just take the outer perimeter of the, um, the square footage of what was here and lay it out how I wanted to. Uh, there were a couple of closets before, a smaller bathroom, a vestibule, door in a different spot. So I made this exactly what I wanted it to be and I just sort of went for it. So even with the green color, um, I chose this wall covering that is uh, hand-woven silk, a bunch of different colors. And that's why in different lights and in different angles, um, it looks like different colors, but it's actually the same material. Sometimes it has this golden green hue. Sometimes it has this turquoise vibe. Uh, this room makes me really happy. And I thrive off of symmetry and sort of linear perfection. I like that. And when I first got the space, one of the things that I couldn't change was that part of the wall was built out. There was a column that went all the way across and the idea of not really centering my bed drove me nuts uh, or centering it, but then having a mass on one side didn't appeal to me. So what I actually did was uh, uh, symmetrically sort of mirrored the build out that was there to create this bed niche and made a little panel there. Um, and I think it just turned out beautifully. It's actually an idea I'm using uh, in several projects now in different ways. So the idea of having this sort of cozy bed niche that doesn't really recess too far back to feel claustrophobic, I think is very attractive. So a couple of years ago, I got obsessed with these head vases. Um, they're traditionally from Sicily. You'll generally see a male-female pair. Um, you'll see them in lots of different paint tones. Uh, and I started doing more and more research on them and I was in Positano, I think it was like 2018, and I found this amazing store that was a half head vase shop sort of double height room with just shelves of different styles and half supermarket. 
don't ask, but they had the most beautiful things. So I bought these there and had them shipped back. Um, I've used them in a show house. They've been in so many different spots in my apartment. Now when people see them, they say, oh, just like White Lotus, um, which is cute. And I'm glad that people recognize them from there. But yeah, this is um, a really beautiful technique that has been uh, being made in that part of the world for a long time. And they're really fun and special. When you look out my window, you just see greenery, especially from the bedroom. And that was a nice little hidden surprise, actually. So part of what I loved about this apartment were the Gramercy Park views. But when I saw it at first, it was winter. So this tree had no leaves on it. And I was just looking straight on the park. And then during the first um, spring I was here, I noticed the leaves coming in. And I sort of started to get a little bit tense about the view being covered up. But now it's become this moment that just makes me so happy because I have full privacy. I feel like I'm in a garden somewhere. Um, it's just really beautiful. And hearing the wind blow through the leaves, hearing birds in the morning, it's a pretty magical space. When people walk into my apartment, I want them to feel two things. I want them to feel transported into this sort of elegant, beautiful world, but I also want them to feel very welcome and comfortable. Uh, so I want you to come in, kick off your shoes, sit wherever you want, and just feel amazing doing whatever we're doing. It's a great question uh, when people ask what gives a home a soul or what sort of comprises the full picture of a home. And I can't really answer it because I describe my process as this sort of um, intellectual Rubik's Cube. I just sort of keep playing with the puzzle and changing different parts of it until it inherently feels right. Um, and I think the big components of it are obviously design, which would be balanced out by color and material and form, but also room use and what you're going to be doing there and sort of how the entire apartment flows, you know, from one space to the next, both visually and from a point of view of living within it. One of the areas of my bedroom suite that I like the most is the closet. Uh, my old apartment had a bunch of little closets, which I organized pretty well. There was a shoe closet, there was a hanging closet, there was a folded closet. But this space, I combined a few different areas to make just one great sort of all-purpose moment. Um, I worked with California closets to sort of design it perfectly for me. Um, I love a well-lit closet, so sort of space for everything. Um, all pretty well organized. This is how I actually live. I know sometimes people ask if I did this for when people are coming over. I don't know, I just like to see things organized. But most important to me was um, housing my shoes. I have a little bit of a shoe thing. So behind this door, you'll see a nice little tower of uh, shoe options. This will take me a minute, but I can get a little bit matchy when I really like something. So I was having a moment, when I was a kid, I loved DuckTales. It was my favorite cartoon. So it started with the shoes. And then I don't even know what you call this, if it's like a scarf or an ascot or a neckerchief. Um, and then, of course, I needed the bag. So now, one off, they're all kind of interesting and they're kind of fun to see together, but I don't know, picture me walking on a plane in this getup. I, I think that's maybe one of the craziest little situations I have. Oh, it's duck towels. It's like Huey, Dewey, and Louie. People ask me to define my style often, and I try to stay away from traditional words. I go more for a feeling. Uh, I want you to feel a certain way when you're in your home, but especially when you're in my home. Uh, so the way I went about designing my apartment was just sort of really feeling it out and thinking about what are my favorite things? What makes me feel comfortable? What makes me feel happy? And how do these things all tie together in a cohesive way? So I think really the answer to how did I go about designing my space was looking inward and thinking about really what I wanted to experience on a daily basis. And the last part of my apartment is the bathroom within my bedroom. Uh, so I wanted to continue the green coloration but not have it feel overwhelming. I love a clean white bathroom. So, started with this great floor tile from Artistic Tile where you bring in different green tones and different white and gray marble tones. Uh, I carried through with the um, Arabescado stone that I had in the kitchen because I just love it uh, with this dark green uh, millwork for my vanity. Um, I like really good lighting. I'm getting a little older. I have to see everything. 
Um, I hung some art in here that I really loved. I thought it was a nice thing to see when I walked in from the bedroom. And again, going back to this sort of finding a use for everything, if you're gonna have it, uh, I had some really pretty barware. Um, there's this whole San Luis set. I think you noticed maybe some of the glasses as um, paintbrush holders, but this is now my uh, mouthwash decanter because if you have it, you should use it. I'm not gonna demonstrate, but you just, yeah, I mean, that's one of the benefits of being single. You can use these things however you want, you know? Just me, my mouth, my mouthwash. So like we said before, uh, that I like to think of an apartment as a full story and how rooms interact. I think that something that should be really well thought out is how one room relates to the next. So you'll see the wall covering in this room and then uh, a purposefully picked out trim and door color, which even though this room has its own identity, when you sort of have the doors open from the living room, this works really well and just creates a whole new dynamic. So it's a different finish, a different color, but looks inherent to the room. So maybe a little specific for some people, but I think it's a good reason to really think about how one room relates to the next. If I were to define the word home, it's a great question. Um, I would say, I would, maybe I would just use another word. I would call it like a nest, sort of place where you just feel peaceful and safe and um, sort of your personal space that no one else can really hinder. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.